How's it going, everyone? It's Sam. Big money has been jumping into crypto in the background. I want to talk about this. If you don't mind, hit subscribe, turn on the bell notification underneath the video, and there are links under there in case you want to buy a new Tesla or you want to trade on margin or you just want some free stocks. So check those out. Now, the market has been kind of quiet over the weekend. Keep in mind that we do have July 4 coming up in the US, so this is typically more of a quiet time for investments. However, you never know in cryptocurrency. We have heard behind the scenes that there are going to be more ETF applications filed over the next week or so. And we're starting to see some big news kind of hitting the, hitting the headlines over the last couple of days. So I do want to cover that, but we, we haven't seen too much change in price. Now, that's really with some of the big dog cryptocurrencies. When you sort by the 24 hour, the 24 hour we've actually seen some pretty big moves in some altcoins. Bitcoin Cash up 19%. We have Near Protocol up 11, Radix up 9%, and some smaller cryptocurrencies uh, have been making bigger moves. And we've even seen that from Aave a couple days ago had a 20 or 30% move in a day. So we're starting to see some altcoins run with Bitcoin kind of just trending sideways a bit, but the Bitcoin dominance is still quite high and Bitcoin's holding well over uh, $30,000. So overall, the market's looking pretty healthy on a day where the traditional market is pulling back a bit. Now we do have PCE coming in Friday. That's probably the next major catalyst. And then after that, we're done with the quarter. Actually, uh, yeah, right around that time, we're going to be done with the quarter. And then we're going to have earnings. We're going to have another Fed meeting and there's a lot more coming down the way. So be dialed in because this is going to be a really important time to pay attention to crypto. Keep in mind that a lot of big companies are moving in the background. SEC sued Binance and Coinbase, and we actually have some Binance news here today. June 15, so 10 days later, BlackRock files for a Bitcoin ETF. Five days later, Fidelity, Citadel, and Schwab launch crypto exchange. June 21st, Powell says crypto is going to stay here as an asset class. And June 23, SEC approves the first leveraged Bitcoin futures ETF. A lot of things happening over the last couple of weeks, and now... Hong Kong, or HSBC, the largest bank in Hong Kong, offers Bitcoin and Ethereum ETF to clients. Now, to be clear, they've already had the ability to buy these ETFs for a while here. On Coindesk, they say that they were actually able to buy since uh, December these publicly listed ETFs. However, now it's the bank allowing them to trade on their trading platform. So still pretty big news. Uh, overall for investors, they do say, though, that the overreaction to this modest development demonstrates the excitement in crypto at the moment um, and all adoption of cryptocurrency investments by mainstream institutions such as HSBC and major financial centers like Hong Kong. So they are saying maybe this was a bit of an overreaction since they already could trade this. Now, we know Hong Kong likes crypto a lot and they are investing in crypto. However, on coin shares, we've seen a lot of outflows recently. We saw about nine weeks straight of outflows in crypto. Compared to last week, we actually saw a pretty big inflow. We had $200 million flow in from institutional investors. Bitcoin was a primary beneficiary, seeing 187 million inflows for the week, representing 94% of the total flows. Short Bitcoin saw outflows for the ninth consecutive week, totaling 4.9 million. Ethereum also saw 8 million, multi-asset saw 8 million, Solana XRP saw small inflows as well. There's a rumor going around that Ripple is going to buy back 10 billion XRP from circulating supply. Now, I have not really seen any source from this. I mean, certain news articles are just stating it like it's fact, but I have not seen where this was actually stated. Also, keep in mind that that's a huge amount of buying back. I mean, XRP is about a $25 billion market cap. They're talking about buying, at today's price, $5 billion worth of XRP. I got 20%, 20% of the circulating supply right now. Of course, this would skyrocket the price and they get less and less bang for their buck. They're also fighting the SEC right now. So I don't think they probably have $5 billion sitting around. So just to shed some light on that, I think that's probably some misinformation. But still, it's good to see overall the whole market getting some inflows. Some large institutional investors thinking now is a good time to be buying cryptocurrency. Now, they're pretty wishy-washy. They're selling when the market's falling down. They're buying when it's going up. And part of that just 
could be because they're partially moving the market. But the fact is, they should have been buying back when FTX was collapsing. They should have been buying throughout this entire time, not just you know flowing money in, flowing money out, making these big uh, changes just based on market sentiment. That's typically not a good time to invest like that. Keep in mind the big players are also buying up companies and trying to buy up some of the traditional crypto assets. They're setting up ETFs and then they're buying or they're trying to buy Grayscale. At least there's rumors that three different companies offered on Grayscale. And these are a list of companies that are interested in buying FTX. This is kind of a broken name or it's a it's a name that doesn't instill a lot of uh, good feelings in the crypto community, but there's still a lot of people that want to buy it, whether it's BlackRock, Ripple, Galaxy, NASDAQ. There are a lot of different companies, big names that are interested in buying up FTX. So they are trying to get into the space. We've also seen the biggest inflow ever to the BITO ProShares uh, ETF as well. So an inflow of 65 million. Now that's not in this list, but Still another big investment vehicle, seeing some inflows. And uh, at the same time, we're start, we're still getting some FUD or some, there's still some fear, uncertainty, and doubt for Binance out there. They exited the Netherlands and they apparently are facing a France probe. The insight is focused on their anti-money laundering procedures. At the same time, uh, they've withdrawn their license from Austria. This just came out today. So there's some people thinking that there could be an issue coming for Binance. AP Abacus on Twitter says sources claiming that Binance is having an all hands emergency meeting this week in Dubai. Specific date and day are not shared, nor the subject matter. SEC, CFTC actions obviously playing a role here, but more so several countries removing Binance in tandem as we just talked about. Now, AP Abacus usually is a bit bearish on Binance, but typically has some good information. So I would be careful out there. As I've said, I would just be careful of any centralized exchange. I don't think there's a real reason to keep your crypto on exchanges at this point. I think it just makes sense to take it off and hold it yourself, even if there is a little bit more work in doing that. I, I would not trust any centralized exchanges, even Binance at this point with my crypto long term. Of course, if you're trading, that's a different matter. But overall, the market's looking pretty good. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a quiet week, I think, here in the market, unless there's some big news that comes out or some big price fluctuation. The fact is we don't have a ton of big events before Friday. Now, we do have Jerome Powell speaking on Wednesday, so that could move the markets a bit. We're seeing the traditional market fall a little bit here today. We could get some price volatility, but overall, it doesn't look like it's going to be a massive week for crypto and for the traditional markets. Let me know your thoughts on this underneath the video. Again, thank you for watching this, and let me know your thoughts overall on the market underneath. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.